Good morning, y'all. What's happening? It's your main man, disappointed coach file on a Sunday, excuse me, on a Monday morning. Morning commute on my way to work. Wondering what in the world is happening to New York football. Well, New York City football. Because the Bills are still, they, the Bills are doing it. The Bills put it on the Washington football team yesterday and did what the Bills were touted to do this season and supposed to do. Now, I'm just, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm a little, I'm a miffed, I'm miffed, I am, because I don't know what's wrong with the Jets, aside from a seemingly everything. These new coaches, man, they're coming in here with these reputations, man, and they're saying these things, man. And they get these fan bases excited with these words that they say. But, and this is actually for both of the coaches, because as of right now, I'm not really seeing much of nothing that they was talking about. You know what I'm saying? All this discipline and defense and, and, and knowing your, your assignments and culture and blah 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 because these Jets look the same confused on offense as as Adam Gase's teams were I mean they don't look prepared man isn't this their second over like there's been three games and two of them I don't believe they scored any points I mean come on guys I, see, this is where I, this is, this is exactly where I don't buy, you know, play the first round guy early. Because as, as, as this is set to go, Zach Wilson is about to go the route of Sam Darnold, the route of Mark Sanchez, the route, you know what I mean? It, it's not voting well for later on down his career this start because even if they don't if, if they win some games and still have a losing record at the end of the year you're gonna hear you know uh we gotta see if Sally is the real deal you know they had a couple of injuries da 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 but then next year if it's the same or similar oh what's wrong with Zach Wilson why can't he get it done and it's the same exact quarterback scenario these young guys are put in impossible situations expecting to do the absolute most when they know the absolute least. It is amazing that more franchises, million and billion dollar franchises, you know, tie and tether their hopes to the most inexperienced players on the field. I, I just find that baffling to be perfectly honest, because I'm not one for that. Especially if my franchise needs wins for the fan base to be at least somewhat satisfied. You know what I mean? Or if I know I'm close to something, you know, why in the world am I going to leave my hopes and dreams in the hands of a rookie quarterback? I wouldn't. And this whole, oh, because of where you drafted him, you have to play him notion, to me, absolutely makes no sense. The person might have deserved to be drafted where they're drafted, but that's that's so that your future is right. You know what I mean? If they don't know what they're doing and you run them out of the daggone league in two years, what was the point? And nowadays... Organizations are more impatient than ever. So, Zach has been put in a terrible position because Robert Saleh is a first-year head coach, so he don't know if his schemes and plans are going to work as as constituted, let alone what the rookie quarterback going to do with that situation. So, I mean, and then to not have, like, top, 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 or at least close to top skill players around the rookie 
so that even if he makes mistakes or doesn't throw it as well, that the skill players can make up for some of the rookie quarterback deficiency. And of course, every young quarterback needs a running game. You can't be having your rookie quarterback throwing 40 passes a game, and you can't be having him sitting back there to get eaten up. You know what I mean? You're eroding his confidence, and he just got here. You know, I mean, this was not the smartest way to put this together. And honestly, who, where is the veteran in the clubhouse to talk to Zach, to make sure that he's all right, to make sure that he knows, you know, stuff. <laughs> make sure he knows, you know, how to prepare, what he's looking at, uh, when the defenses do their little schemes and stuff, you know, because... He's, he's, he's throwing a lot of interceptions. You know, they're not scoring any points. I don't know. It's, I, I, I don't understand what's happening with the Jets. I mean, at least with the Giants. And, again, this is not at all a, a friendly conversation. But the Giants, the Giants are immature as hell. They are undisciplined. They are sloppy at times. And it's like they overcompensate for a bad play. You know, because that's where you're getting unsportsmanlike penalties and stuff like that. It's just really, really, really a bad look for the G-Men right now as far as again, watching that game yesterday it just reminded me of every other game we've played this season mental lapses ruin us mental lapses I mean and then unfortunately our whole wide receiver core got decimated yesterday and then we lost Blake Martinez for the season Yay. Now, who is Danny supposed to throw to when Darius Slayton, Sterling Shepard, and Kenny Galladay go out? Now, I know Kenny came back, but by then, Kenny was limping and gimping, man. You know, I mean, that's just what it is. He was, he was, not, he was not helping. Evan Ingram drops don't help. You know, I mean, and Saquon can't, he can't get off if the defense knows that we have to throw the ball because we're down. And why in the world can't we get the week behind Atlanta Falcons off the field? Why in the world do we get them get set up for a daggone game-winning field goal? I mean, I'm so tired of our defense failing us. I'm so tired of these immature penalties, yo. I mean, because, and this is not a plea cop. This is actually what I really feel is the, is, is the truth. Teddy Bridgewater and the Broncos smacked the crap out of us. They just did. They, they, were, they, they were very prepared. They knew what they wanted to accomplish, and they did it. And they were the first team to show me that our defense was suspect this season. You know what I mean? Because, I'm sorry, you, you're not expecting Teddy Bridgewater and, and, and the Broncos to, to slice and dice. You know what I mean? But that's exactly what they did. They sliced our defense up and diced it to pieces. But the Washington game was an extremely winnable game. There were moments in the game where we had the game won. And what did we do? Immaturity, lack of defense, lack of discipline, and we lost the game. We were up on Atlanta. We were up. We lost the game. We could truly be sitting here two and one instead of zero and three, but the truth is we are zero and three, and we are zero and three because of Joe Judge. In, in the story.
He's the head coach of this team. He came in talking discipline, focus, attention to detail, the very things we are not seeing. I wrote an article about this last week. Check it out on the Candid Articles up on the CandidCorner.com. Uh, this is, I was hoping against the Falcons we could get right. You know what I mean? I was hoping his lap running and all of that, you know, got to these guys and they're recognizing where their deficiencies are, but that again didn't happen. And what happened? More undisciplined turnovers, penalties, drive killers. I mean, dude, we are the epitome of shooting ourselves in the foot right now. That is the New York Giants right now. We are shooting ourselves in the foot. I don't particularly myself care about anything any owner says. I really don't. I don't get into owner talk like at all. I think it's a waste of time for fans to be perfectly honest because what the the owner, you know, once the, once the product is on the field, there's really not much the owner can do at that moment. So, you know, whether he says the fans have a right to boo or not, or if, you know, there will be hell to pay or not, I, I don't care. Dude, please. You know, I care about what the coaches right there are saying. You know what I mean? So, again, I know fans are mad at, uh, at Mara, I guess. Uh, yeah, fans get mad at everything. So, when we're not winning, fans get mad at everything. So, I hear it, you know, and I understand it. And, again, get on me and blah, 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 blah. You know, at the end of the day, I'm not too mad at what he put on this team, I do really feel like they should have spent a lot more time on that offensive line in the offseason, like actually bringing in guys like other teams did, instead of, you know, kind of just patching up what we had last year and just keeping that going like it's cool. But, you know, once the once the product rolled out, I mean, dude, you guys are getting paid to play this game and to play it at the highest level, and I'm not, I have yet to see that from everybody. Danny, I'm sorry, Danny Jones, Daniel Jones has been playing his tail off for us. You know, I mean, I I get really tired of regurgitated agendas and people just waxing and it because last year something, you know, Danny is not the problem. So please, I'm tired of hearing y'all blame Danny. Danny ain't the damn problem. I mean... There's a lot of smart fans out there. There are. There's plenty of intelligent fans that know what they're seeing. You know what I mean? So it's like when I hear, oh, Daniel, and why did we draft him? And that, I'm just like, man, get a new thing to cry about. We got plenty to cry about. Don't, that's not it. If anything, I'm actually glad to see his maturity and growth right now. You know what I mean? Who is he supposed to throw to when Evan is dropping balls and he has no other wide receivers out there? CJ Board, really? Come on, man. Come on. We got practice squad guys, you know what I mean, taking real reps right now because everybody's pulling a hammy or an ACL. You know, our wide receiver core is as decimated as the Ravens' daggone running back core right now. It is crazy. You know, I mean, I'm. I, it's not that I had super duper high hopes for this year. You know what I mean? Because yo, know, getting to a Super Bowl is hard. But I do want to see incremental growth. I want to see changes, positive changes. You know, I, I want to see that this, you know, college locker room vibe that Joe Judge is throwing down of discipline and blah blah blah. I want to see if that stuff is actually working or not. Because if it's not working, then what are we doing? You know, and 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 the more it, what what does Joe Judge need to do to rally these guys to do their job? You know, you know I, that's that's where we are right now. It's it's just the truth of the matter. This is where we are now. <laughs> Just to throw out an optimistic note here, and I'm going to have an article up this week about the uh, five zero wins and three loss teams that there are as of uh, today in the National.
National Football League. Uh, and of them, I do believe the Giants have the strongest chance of turning it around. And it's not because of homerism, it's simply because of the way that I see them losing these games. You know, it's it's not, I mean, again, two or three games we could have won. You know what I mean? If we just were disciplined in our assignments. So that tells me if we can find a way to get these gentlemen to actually play professionally for the entire game, for more than one game, we can turn it around. Some of these teams, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Jaguars, Jets, I don't know. Colts have a chance to. And the Lions, the Lions are going to be like a, a, a fifth, a, a under the five. They're going to be a 500 team. So they're going to actually catch some wins here too, I feel like. But the Giants, man. It's more, I think for me, the Giants situation is more frustrating than the Jets situation because it doesn't have to be this way. Not to say that the Jets have to be this way, but with the rookie, everybody on that team and the skilled players, man, you can see them being 0-3. The Giants really should not be 0-3 right now. You know what I mean? And the other little caveat is Tonight, one team will be two and one in the NFC East. One team. So we'll have one two and one team, one zero and three team, and the other two teams will be one and two. So the sad part is we're not out of it at all, at all, really. You know what I mean? And we've only got one division loss so far. If we can turn it around and be at least win division games, which, honestly, I'm not sure because the two teams that are playing tonight, I feel like, are playing much better than the Giants are. You know, uh, and they're both, I can't stand both teams. I'm sorry. I'm not an Eagles fan. I'm not a Cowboys fan. I'm a Giants fan. So, I'm the one stuck right now. It is what it is. But, <laughs> you know, um, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, Washington with Heineke. He was looking good for a minute, but then the Bills figured all of that out and ceased all of that good, that, all of that good vibe. Like I honestly figured they would, but this is very frustrating as a Giants fan because they could at least be one and two right now and in the mix instead of being at the bottom of the division again. Joe Judge, yo, you on watch, bro? You better get this thing handled. Shamir man, coach. Check us out at uh, the Candy Corner Wednesday night. Check us out on the Knicks Corner every uh, Saturday afternoon. Yeah, I appreciate it. Check out the articles on Candid Gear. Excuse me, the Candid Articles and the Off the Ball Network. Most definitely. Uh, big shouts to the Off the Ball Network. And I'm out of here. So y'all have a great Monday.